Welcome to Watchtower History. So finally, I, but I came to the conclusion in 1968 when they started talking about Armageddon coming in 1975 that I had, a, I had some problem with that. I, it, it boiled down to this, that uh, if God had sent Jesus to save the world, And, uh, and he reported to Jehovah and said, well, I've got uh, one-tenth of one percent of the population ready to survive Armageddon, and you'll have to kill all the rest of them. And I, I thought, you know, if somebody came to me and I had mm-hmm. sent them to do something, and they, they, the, the total, out of the total number possible, they only had one uh, percent, I, I wouldn't be very happy with that. And so I thought, uh, are you sure that God wants to do that now? And uh, uh, considering how few really are saved. And so anyhow, I, I on that basis, I felt like I needed to leave. Uh, I was going to be the president in the next year of that company. And um, but I told them that I had to leave and that uh, the, uh, they said, well, they, uh, they, I was going to go with Kroger Company as a, a official of their company. And, uh, and they said, no, uh, would you go to Birmingham? We bought a company down there. It's a little company, but it can be grown big. And uh, if you go down there, we'd, we'd sure like to, to have you do that for us, with us. And so I ended up moving to Alabama. and uh, uh, But with some some beginnings of, of concern about the, this, the end of the world being called with so few really being saved. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's then, really, you know, what made me question Watchtower when I was studying with them, I was never a witness, but just, you know, God's going to destroy 99.999% of the world. Yeah, yeah. Just didn't it, make any logical awesome. sense in my mind. No, no it, it didn't to me. And I, I, I had a hard time getting around that and uh, dealing with it. And the answer was to just get away from it. And so uh, when I moved to Alabama, I told the people there, the witnesses, that I was just going to be too busy for a while building a company. We had a big, huge warehouse to build and, and, and lots of customers to attract, and it was a big, big job. And, uh, and so I had the excuse of not getting right back in as another elder. And uh, so, at, but it wasn't, and, and I, that, that lasted for a while, but finally 1975 came and went. And uh, in, in the Christmas time of 76, the uh, governing body called for a group of their Gift, what they call the gifts and men. Uh, uh, that's what they called me, anyhow. And uh, they, I had, I had corresponded with them. They had written to me confidential letters, asking for advice on a number of different subjects having to do with the with congregation, not with particularly with doctrine, but with uh, dealing with matters of uh, people in the congregation. And uh, so they, there was about forty or. 50 people there at that meeting uh, that they called and said, told them that this is the first time in the history of our organization we've ever done anything like this. We've never called anybody in and asked for any help, but we see you men as our gifts and, and uh, we need to have you tell us very straight. There will be no recrimination, no, no gain, no vengeance. If you, whatever you tell us will be uh, confidential. But we don't want you to talk about 1975. They did not want to talk about that, but that was what was on everybody's mind, and um, that, that they had they had really messed that up. And um, so, I when I came back from there from that meeting, I had some real serious uh, doubts because the uh, I had had no problem with with our any place where I'd been as the government. As, elder in charge uh company servant uh, that that uh, we've had any big difficulties with people but uh uh so as to have to 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 treat them badly but uh the stories that were told at that meeting by some of the others 
uh, of, that were just terrible. The, uh, the abuse of power and uh, the hurt that was inflicted on uh, undeserving people. And I came away thinking, how is that possible for God and Christ to set up a system that is so obviously corrupt? It has got there are people it's that damaging don't people yeah the ho- you know, they're no more qualified I- to judge anything than than i was to fly a 747 and uh, <laughs> and it troubled me and i so i i by that time i'd started my own supermarket chain and um, i turned them at the presidency over to my brother and i decided i'm I, i've got to get it some answers you know all and, and paul has a question all- for you real quick before Peter, yeah, you, yeah. let's hold that thought right where you're going because I want to know what you're going to say next. <laughs> but I'd like to confirm something for people who are going to be listening to this. Um, yeah. I, I can personally attest hearing personally at my house because of my grandmother's um, influence in people, both circuit overseers, um, elders. There, there was in the air a talk of the end coming in 1975. The society oh, then boy. denied it. But here, here I'd like another witness um, into this to attest to this. Was this not going on in open moral? Of course. Yeah. Oh, oh, of course. Of course it was. It was everywhere. It, I, uh, yeah, it was on the talks on the platform. They were saying it. Uh, um, oh, of course it was. Of course it was. And it wasn't just it was wherever I went. Uh, I gave speeches all around in in uh, Illinois or the, in Alabama when I got there, and it was everywhere. It, the, the congregations were just excited and inflamed with it. it the end was coming. It was 1975, it would be over, and and I can remember an employee of mine was so hurt that I didn't buy it as much as he thought I should, and. Mm. Uh, uh, one time in when he had been drinking too much, he said, but if you can't believe in it, you, maybe you should leave it. Uh, and I said, no, uh, they'll come to their senses. They'll come to their senses and they'll apologize. And they've overstepped themselves and they, they'll recognize that. Anybody would see that that, that, uh, that is what happened. And uh, so in, in, in 76, when they called this meeting together, they they wanted to talk about why our meeting attendance was down, why we'd lost nearly a, a million people, and uh, uh, by their best estimate, and why what could be done with to help our younger people and so on. So they had a raft of, of very very serious questions, and and the answers just weren't forthcoming. And and instead of back, instead of probably, apologizing for their mistake, instead of apologizing, they blamed everyone else for their problem. Now, of course they did, and yeah. that and that that didn't go over very big because that's not very big of people that you, you expect more than that from a, a fully mature human being. That if he makes a dumb mistake, okay, make it, but then apologize for it, correct it, do what you can do to undo the damage of it. But they didn't do any of those things, and uh, so uh, I I. I really had a, a problem with it. And finally, I, I had a number of friends in Bethel and Brooklyn, and uh, uh, two of them, uh, D- Dave Olson and uh, uh, R- Ray Franz, was a member of the governing body and was considered, except for his uncle, to be the main writer. In fact, he wrote the the encyclopedic dictionary for them and so on. Right. And uh, he was, he was a, a very close personal friend and, and he would come down and, and spend his vacations with us and we'd go places together. Uh, and so one time he was coming, he was going to spend a, a month at least uh, of his vacation, I guess his whole vacation with us. And, and I told Janet, my wife, I said, uh, I'm going to, I'm, I've made up my mind. I'm telling Ray tomorrow when he comes that this will be the last time he'll come here because I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to leave Jehovah's Witnesses. I can't do anything else. There's too many things that are wrong. Too many things that, that are, that I can't handle anymore. So the next day when Ray came, 
we were walking down to our, I have a swan pond, and uh, walking down there to it, and I told him that, uh, Ray, you won't be coming back anymore because I am going to leave. I, I, can't, I can't handle it anymore. It, there's too many things wrong. I've got to back out. And uh, uh, I, um, and he said, are you sure? And we talked and talked and talked the night away and, and that whole day. And then he said, well, you know, you, you've been talking and maybe we ought to run down for a week to Trunk Bay in the Virgin Islands. Uh, and uh, why don't we do that? So we did and uh, take a little vacation down there and, and uh, we, we did our diving and so on, swimming. And during the day and then the night, Ray decided to open up and tell me uh, in a hundred different ways that the governing body was not governed by scriptural or spiritual considerations at all. And it was, that was, that was really an eye-opening thing to me. And, and uh, uh, so then it was while he was still here another week or two after that, that when he got home that he said, you know, we've got problems at Bethel uh, 